are bionic superhumans on the horizon. An informational text by Ramirez Nam. What does the bionic revolution mean for the future of humankind? We're in the midst of a bionic revolution, yet most of us don't know it. About 220,000 people worldwide already walk around with a cochlear implant. Devices worn around the ear and turn sound waves into electric impulses shunted directly into the auditory nerve. Tens of thousands of people have been implanted with deep brain stimulators, devices that send an electrode tunneling several inches into the brain. Deep brain stimulators are used to control Parkinson's disease, though lately they've also been tested with encouraging results to use against severe depression and obsessive compulsive disorder. The most obvious bionics are those that replace limbs. Olympian Blade Runner, Oscar Petrotis made a splash with his cheetah carbon fiber prosthesis. Yet those are a relatively simple technology, a curved piece of slightly springing super strong material. In the digital age, we're seeing more sophisticated limbs. Consider the thought controlled bionic leg that Zach Werther used to climb all 103 floors of the Chicago Wilson's Tower, or the nerve controlled bionic hand that an Iraqi war veteran, Glenn Lehman, had attached after the loss of his original hand, or even more sophisticated eye limb ultra or artificial hand with five independent articulating artificial fingers. Those limbs don't just react mechanically to pressure. They actually respond to the thought and the intention of their owners, flexing, extending, gripping, and releasing on mental command. The age when prosthesis were largely inert pieces of wood, metal, and plastic is passing. Advances in microprocessors, in technical and techniques to interface digital technology with the human nerve system. In a battery, technology is also prosthesis. It, I'm sorry. Did battery technology to allow prosthesis to pack more power with less weight are turning replacement limbs into active parts of the human body. In some cases, they're not even part of the body at all. Consider the case of Kathy Hutchinson. In 1997, Kathy had a stroke, leaving her without control of her arms. Hutchinson volunteer for an expense experimental procedure that could one day help millions of people with partial or complete paralysis. She let researchers implant a small device in the part of her brain responsible for motor control. With that device, she's able to control an external robotic arm by thinking about it. That in turn brings up an interesting question. If the arm isn't physically attached to her body, how far away could she be and still controlling it? The answer is at least thousands of miles. In animal studies, scientists have shown that a monkey with a brain implant can control a robot's arm 7,000 miles away. The monkey's mental signals were sent over the internet from Duke University in North Carolina to the robot arm in Japan. In this day and age, distance is almost irrelevant. The superhuman frontier.
The 7,000 mile away prosthesis arm makes an important point. These new prostheses aren't just going to restore missing human abilities. They're going to enhance our abilities, giving us power we never had before and argumenting other capabilities we have. While the current generation of prosthesis is still primitive, we can already see this taking shape when a monkey moves a robotic arm on the other side of the planet just by thinking about it. Other research is pointing to enhancements to memory and decision-making. The hippocampus is a small seahorse-shaped part of the brain that's essential in forming new memories. If it's damaged by an injury to the head, for example, people start having difficulty forming new long-term memories. In the most extreme cases, this can lead to, to the complete inability to form new long-term memories, as in the film, Miamento. Working to find a way to repair this sort of brain damage, researchers in 2011 created a hippocampus chip that can replace damaged brain tissue. When they implanted it in rats with a damaged hippocampus, they found that not only could their chip repair damaged memory, it could improve the rat's ability to learn new things. Nor is memory the end of it. Another study in 2012 demonstrated that we can boost intelligence at least one sort in monkeys, scientists at Wake Forest University implanted specialized brain chips in a set of monkeys and trained those monkeys to perform a picture matching game. When the implant was activated, it raised their scores by an average of 10 points on a 100 point scale. The implant makes monkeys smarter. From disabilities to super capable. Both of these technologies for boosting memories and intelligences are in very early stages. In small animal studies, only a years or possibly decades away from wide use in humans. Still, they make us wonder what happens when it's possible to improve on the human body and mind. The debate has, al has started already, of course. Oscar Petrotis had to fight hard for inclusion in the Olympics. Many objected that his carbon fiber prosthesis gave him a competitive advantage. He was able, with the help of doctors and biomedical engineers, to make a compelling case that his cheetah blades didn't give him any advantage on the field. But how long will that be true? How long until we have prosthesis, not to mention drugs and genetic therapies that make athletes better in their sports? But the issue is much, much wider than professional sports. We may care passionately about the integrity of the Olympics or professional cycling or so on, but they already directly affect a small number of us in other areas of life, in the workforce in particular, enhancement technology might affect all of us. When it's possible to make humans smarter, sharper, and faster, how will that affect us? Will the effect be mostly positive, boosting our productivity and the rate of human innovation? Or Will it be just another pressure to compete at work? Who will be able to afford these technologies? Will anyone be able to have their body and more importantly, their brain upgraded? Or will only the rich have access to these enhancements? We have a little while to consider these questions, but we are to start. 
the technology we sneak we sneak its way into our lives starting with people with disabilities the injured and the ill it'll improve their lives in ways that are unquestionably good and then one day we'll make up and realize we'll wake up and realize that we're doing more than restoring lost functions. We're enhancing it. Superhuman technology is on the horizon. Time to start thinking about what that means for us.